This is part 44 of AngularJS tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to use URL parameters with UI Router in Angular. Here is what we want to do. At the moment, we are on students page where we see the list of student names. When I click on a student name, notice that specific student ID, in this case 1, is passed in the URL. But then on the destination page, we don't see that specific student details. The application is broken at the moment. Let's see how to fix this using URL parameters with UI Router. To use URL parameters with UI Router, there are three simple steps. The first step is to define the state with URL parameter. So here we are defining a new state and the name of the state is student details. When this state is activated, this is the URL that we want to navigate to slash students slash colon ID. URL parameters are prefixed with a colon symbol. So in this case, ID is the URL parameter. So this state has got a URL parameter. That's our first step. Define the state with URL parameter. Let's do that now. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Notice at the moment we're using when function to create this route slash students slash colon ID. When method is present in ng route module which we are not using anymore. At the moment we are using UI router module. So let's use state function to define our state with a URL parameter. With state function, the first parameter is the name of the state that we want to define. The name of the state is going to be student details. And the second parameter is the state configuration object. So when this state is active, this is the URL that we want to navigate to slash students slash colon ID. ID in this case is the URL parameter. That's our first step. The second step is to link to the state which has got that URL parameter. If you look at these student names, they are present in student.html partial template. So let's go to students.html. Notice at the moment we are using href attribute to build these links that we have here. Instead of using href, I am going to use UI href attribute. Href stands for state reference. When we use href attribute, we'll have to specify the name of the state that we want to activate, not the URL. So the name of the state that we want to activate is student details. So when we click on a student name, we want to see that specific student details. And to do that, we will have to activate this student details, which is going to take us to this URL slash students slash ID. So the value is going to be the name of the state that we want to activate. And if you look at this state that we have defined here, it has got a parameter. So we have to supply a value for that parameter. To supply a value for that URL parameter which this state has got, I'm going to use that state as a method here. And then to that, I'm going to pass a JavaScript object and this JavaScript object is going to have a single property and the name of that property is going to be ID and the value for that is going to come from the student object. So where is the student object coming from? If you look at this ng repeat directive right here, notice what we are doing. We are looping through the students list that the students controller is returning so we have the student object. So from that student object, we are using the ID property to retrieve the ID value of that specific student. And then we are assigning that value to this ID property of the JavaScript object that we are passing to the student details state. And if you look at the URL parameter name, it's also ID. So that's how we are passing a value for the URL parameter to that state. That's our second step to link to the state which has got the URL parameters. And the final step is to read that specific parameter value from the controller function, call the web service method, pass the ID value, and then retrieve that specific student details. Now, if you look at the state that we have configured, the student details state, when this state is active, this is the controller that 
will be responsible for that state student details controller we already have that controller function but it's commented so first let's uncomment this and notice at the moment we're using route params service this route params service is present in ng route module which we are not using anymore at the moment we're using ui router module to read parameter values ui router module has provided state params service so let's inject that service and then I'm going to use this service and on that I'm going to use ID property so to retrieve the ID parameter value we're using that parameter name as a property on the state param service so if you look at our state notice the parameter name is ID now this parameter will be available within the state params service and it's available in the form of a property we use it you know with the same name dot id which is going to retrieve the id parameter value and then we are passing it to this get student web service method which is going to retrieve that specific student details from the database and return that so let's save all these changes and i am going to reload this app and now look at this when I click on a student name that specific student ID is passed and now we get to see that specific student details but then this link you know we need to rebuild this as well so let's go to student details dot HTML partial template again here we're using href attribute instead of that I'm going to use UI SRF attribute and where do we want to go we want to when I click on this link right here we want to go back to a different state and the state that we want to go back to is this state right here students state so the value is the name of the state that we want to activate in this case students so let's save these changes reload this once again and when I click on this we are back on the students list thank you for listening and have a great day